I can't be the only one to be thinking about this stuff. And then sometimes, poof, it just evaporates. You know, so I figured I'd just, what the hell, I'll just make a video while I'm driving since it's fresh in my mind. So that way the thought doesn't go away. I'm an avid lover of technology, especially consumer handheld technology, smartphones, cameras, etc. You name it. Okay, I'm all for it. Uh, one of the things that I was discussing with a colleague of mine is I want to see uh, I want to see and I think it'll be necessary to have a revolution in data storage okay systems and implementations and hardware and all kinds of things and I'm pretty sure there's already a lot of things going on behind the scenes way outside of my control and my know-how or even to my knowledge but yet yet again I can see this this problem happening and let me know if you agree with me or what you think it's being done about it so far or please educate me give me a link or somewhere to to you know to go and continue to learn about it because I see that a lot of companies made the transition of the software to cloud ba based platforms and, and I can see it I can see that you know I can see that being a more lucrative solution I can see it being more feasible also for the consumer to obtain the latest piece of software right I, you know I don't I, I no longer have to purchase a disk with a Microsoft Office license and be limited to Office version 2000 even even when the, the newer version came in because I have the power of cloud software. The internet updates everything for me as long as I continue to pay my monthly subscription. However, internet's down. Boom, you lose access to your data. Something happens and you're not able to save a file. See, the, the implications, I understand, the, the benefits far outweigh the implications of not having, okay, of not having access to, to the cloud on, on cloud-based software. Microsoft Office as an example for, for you know, for temporarily. However, I see the 2020s being the, the next digital industrial revolution per se, because the era of AI, it's completely overtaking consumer technology as we know it, okay? Large language models. And now with, you know, with the hot topic of Rabbit introducing their, their language action model or whatever the term stands for, this is gonna create a new wave of data harnessing. And it's going to also create new ways to harvest data from consumers. The point is, is that where's it all being stored? How is it all gonna be stored? Uh, what solutions are there now to store all of this massive amounts of data that's going to be flooding the market on the back end and on the front end? That's gonna change the, the way we communicate, the way we do things. I'm, I'm looking at small businesses that have problems with a lot of their cloud-based software when it comes to connecting in. Hey, you know what? I wasn't able to log in and get access to my dashboard. Something's wrong with the cloud. Some, you know, the cloud is down. And see, there's there's so many different layers of how technology is being stored, or how you know wh where are the servers? How, how is the access being procured? Where are they located? How how many different things have to happen before you know how your connection is established? Well. I may be completely off topic here, but I, I do think that all of this, all of these changes, all of this new, especially all of this uh, cons consumer facing AI technology, because there's an insane amount of stuff happening on the back end that even though I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm excited and, and, you know, and, and hope to see what it'll do. But all of this new technology and all of this data, okay, the data storage, right? Networks have to be improved. Servers have to be upgraded. But how is it going to affect what we have now since the rapid accelerating change of technology? To me, it's happening at an even more rapid pace than anything I've seen before. The way, the, the era of the smartphone, the way that it popularized and it took over the late 2000s and the early 2010s, you know, and the adoption of these technologies and the implementation of these technologies into modern life as we know it, even though, yes, it took off but I don't see it being quite as fast as a phenomenon as AI. And part of me is fearful that the current infrastructure on the back end that support these technologies is not prepared to be able to support and handle this massive amounts of data. And with so much of today's software from small businesses having to use, for example, QuickBooks or, or you know, or, or POS systems with so much infrastructure currently living in the cloud what happens when something goes wrong what happens when we have a, a massive problem what's been doing what's been done on the back end to mitigate this from happening 
And how does that all come in place? You know, I, I love to somehow explore a little bit deeper into what this is. And lots of times I sit there and I go on YouTube and it's like my, my brain, as is, is, is you can tell, I came here at a red light. You know, I'm, I can be very ADHD, but some of these thoughts I find fascinating to explore. What happens when we have to solve a problem of such magnitude? What happens when we have, you know, wide system audi you know, outages as we have them now in, in different parts, but something of this scale. See, I'm, not only am I excited to see the technology of tomorrow, I'm also excited to see the solutions, the safety solutions for the technology of tomorrow because so much of today's uh, transactional conversations and, and methods in which we live rely so much on, on cloud-based technology and you know, I'm excited for the changes that are going to be happening, but I'm also worried and I'm also scared for the impact it's going to have. And, and if we do have a digital foundation of networks and security and protocols and, and physical equipment that is really, you know, prepared to be able to undertake, or if the evolution of such equipment, okay, and such solutions is going to be able to grow at the same rapid pace that the other side of technology is. You know, it's just, I'm excited and, you know, and I'm excited, I'm worried, I'm, uh, I'm in, in so many weird ways, I'm morbidly curious to see what the future holds and how we're going to go about it. So, Willie Mobile here, I'm driving in my car, pull up at a red light, finally get to kind of connect with you guys a bit eye to eye. But this was my thought of the drive, I just kind of to make a, I want to make a video. I, I for sure cannot be the only one thinking about some of this stuff. And I want to be more educated. I love to learn more. So please connect with me, kind of point me in the right direction, uh, enlighten me. I'd, I'd love to know a bit more. So when I get these, right, these thoughts of uh, confusion and curiosity, I, I can obtain the knowledge to, to satisfy, right, my own inner curious mind. So thank you so much for watching. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I'll see you guys in the next video.